Despite the hectic mood among the staff at HQ, the start of the briefing was delayed. But the weary pilots, knowing full well that they must force their exhausted bodies back into the air once the order was given, weren't the slightest bit disturbed by the delay. Hey, what are you writing there? I just can't remember this next phrase. Here, let me see. Hey! The princess couldn't feed the dove that day. She was too sick. May I take a look? Rosgrease. The demon of Rosgrease got her, right? You know the story? The demon from the North Sea. I remember. My grandma used to tell me bedtime stories about it. And every time she did, I'd be too scared to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Ugh. Settle down, people. I knew a little about that famous legend, too. When history witnesses a great change, Raz Grease reveals itself, first as a dark demon. As a demon, it uses its power to rain death upon the land, and then it dies. However, after a period of slumber, Raz Grease returns. Gentlemen! Excuse me, Colonel. This is an absolutely vital mission to us. As the staff advisor sent from Central HQ for this effort, I'd like to explain it myself. The Ocean Army is planning a vast offensive with the ultimate objective of occupying the capital of Yuktabania. If this operation succeeds, it will end the war in very short order. However, the Yuktabanians have attacked our beachhead with ballistic missiles from the Rimfaxi, a Synfaxi-class submersible carrier stationed in the icy waters of Razgriz Straits. Fortunately, our ground forces had already completed attack preparations, so despite the missile attack, the offensive began as planned. Nevertheless, we must neutralize the threat of another Rimfaxi missile attack on our ground forces. We have a single chance to stage a successful air attack on the underwater carrier Rimfaxi. Our passive sonar has detected a transport submarine that we believe is headed for the Rimfaxi. We believe the transport sub's mission is to supply the Rimfaxi with missiles. Based on its course and speed, we've calculated its rendezvous time with the Rimfaxi. By amazing coincidence, it is precisely the same time as the zero hour of our ground attack. At this time, the Rimfaxi will have to surface to restock its missiles. At that exact moment, ingress at low altitude to avoid detection, launch a surprise attack, and sink the Rimfaxi. Once surfaced, it only takes the Rimfaxi one minute to rig for an emergency dive. If your approach is detected, you will only have one minute to complete your attack on the Rimfaxi. Now keep in mind, there won't be any support from Arkbird this time around. This mission rests solely on your shoulders. The entire ground offensive is relying on this first surprise attack, so don't disappoint us. I want you to turn the icy Rosgris Straits into the enemy's graveyard. We're launching with this formation then? War Dog, launch! Pilots, Pilots. check your plane and prepare for refueling. One mile to refueling craft. 500 yards to go. One hundred yards to go. Blaze, maintain your current flight path. Perfect, Blaze. Commencing refueling. the submarine fleet. You are restricted from flying above 1,000 feet. We can't risk having our surprise attack detected. I'm getting chills. This northern sea is where the demon of Rosgrease came from. Rosgrease. Huh. There's no way that
that could have been the Raz Kreese. Hold your chatter. Commencing calm out procedures shortly. Maintain radio silence. Guess I'll cut off the mic and try talking to myself. just sent off an enemy detection notice. They're in fact he's gonna dive in one minute. Attack immediately! Hey, our cover's blown anyway. I'm gonna start talking now. Enemy planes, halt all resupply operations. Enemy planes? We're still in the middle of a mission! Damn it! How did they smell us out? 30 seconds to rim taxi dive!
The surprise attack on the Rimfaxi was a success, and the carrier has sunk to the bottom of the Rosgreeze Straits. The threat from the Northern Sea has disappeared, and the Ocean forces are on the offensive against Yuktobania. Pilots who sunk the enemy submarines are right over there. And I'm the person you want to interview now? No, it's not that. It's just that I heard you used to be a fighter pilot yourself. I just fly freight planes for the maintenance crews now. The captain, Captain Bartlett that is, it was time for an old man like me to quit trying to compete with the young guys. Talk about a lack of respect. <laughs> Where did you meet Captain Bartlett? We were both shot down and we bailed out behind enemy lines in the last war. We got through the bullet-ridden battlefield and made it back to the Allied front line. And I tell you, it was tough getting the army to believe we were on their side. Shot down? You two? Hey, it was a long time ago. Everyone makes mistakes, right? Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. Even if you're not flying with those pilots, your age and experience provide a lot of support for all of them. I just wanted to tell you that. I've seen that you really listen to what they say, and you always have helpful suggestions for them. Well, thank you. I think they're all going to need you, now more than ever. I'll do what I can. These people, it's like they're walking on a tightrope that could snap at any second. They're going to reach their breaking point sooner or later. Yeah. <laughs> 